Hello from the Bay's Basement. I'm Steve Kim, and I'm really happy to be here today with Keith Lowe, who I go way back with. Hi, Keith. Hi, Steve. So I want you to know, first of all, that when I first came to Seattle, I used to come and watch you and hear you play fretless, and you were my fret favorite fretless player in Seattle. Oh, wow. And so I can't remember what night of the week that was, and you didn't play the gig for all that long. It was about like a month or something. But I was there every, whatever it was, Tuesday night or something, right? Maybe the Merchant's Cafe? No, it was up in the east side oh, that's somewhere. Right. Okay. That was that thing that you were doing up there that you, we couldn't ever put together who that was, right? But, <laughs> now, the thing that I always thought about you is you're always really happy when you're playing. And it's not a put on kind of thing, you know? You just, you look like you're really glad to be there. And that's all kinds of different bass performances. You know, it's like, a, you know, you've done section work with the with the double bass, bowed, all the way to touring on the electric bass. And of course, I mentioned fretless and jazz playing and, and pop and rock. And so uh, how did all this happen? Did, was it bass in the beginning or what, what was it? Yeah, let's see. So uh, came from a musical family. Um, Which was? Like mom and... Well, they... My mom and dad played a little bit. My mom actually played piano. Uh, and in the early days, she would sit with me and practice with me. Oh, you played piano? No, no, no. I would play bass. And she would uh, just play along with me so oh, cool. I could hear it. Cool. And how old were you then? Uh, I started at 10. On the double bass? On the double bass. It was a full-size cello, tuned like a bass. Cool. Yeah, so uh, music was all around. Um, the youngest of five, so I watched my sisters and my brother practicing. And they, two violinists, a cellist, and a French horn player. Oh, so that was, music was in the house, practicing was in the house. Yeah. So all of that just was, when you started it, it was already an established thing. In the family, yeah, it didn't seem like uh, it, <laughs> I mean, it's not like I didn't have a choice, but I just didn't have to think about it. It's like, yeah, I yeah, want to yeah, do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right. Well, that now uh, I remember one time you you mentioned to me that you were in youth symphony, so that yes. was just a natural outgrowth of your parents being involved in music and your siblings and so forth. Yeah, yeah. Um, my uh, we we quickly. Uh, my parents quickly found me a teacher named Ron Simon. Oh, who, sure, from the from the local symphony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in the Seattle Symphony forever, and uh, man, he taught so many acoustic bass players in this town. Sure, yeah. Really great. Um, so yeah, or really early on, my parents started giving me lessons once a week. I studied with him once a week for like twelve years or something, ten, oh, twelve wow. years. So, uh, you know, my parents loved classical music, and uh, there's a thing in Seattle, the Little Symphony, the Junior Symphony, and the Youth Symphony. Mm -hmm. And you kind of go through all of them and, you know, end up in the Youth Symphony. Um, so I was in the Little Symphony, I think, for a year. And um, normally I would go to the Junior Symphony, but, man, they... They needed bass players in the youth symphony, and I think they were also trying to challenge me. So uh, I remember going to the University of Washington, like I'm like twelve or thirteen. So they bumped you up from the bush leagues right up to the <laughs> yeah. bigs, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know, and I just had to go audition for the conductor, and you know, it was I just played like a major scale, couple of octaves, and they and, said you're in. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was really blessed with a lot of things like that. Like my, um, when I was in junior high, the high high school music teacher would uh, got me to play in the high school stage band. So he'd come to my house and pick me up and drive me to a stage band rehearsal in the morning up in high school. And then I'd go back to junior high. So it sounds like from school years on, you were really pretty busy with music. It was my right. whole life. Yeah, and yeah. and uh, now how did that how did that translate into playing the electric bass? Oh man! <laughs> so uh, 
So, because I think that's what a lot of people, you know, associate you as, as a electric sure. bass player, right? Yeah. For a long time, I kind of didn't play this the acoustic bass much. Um, so, yeah, when I was, I think maybe in fourth grade, fifth grade, the orchestra teacher, Mr. Carlson, uh, he... He loaned me his electric bass, and it was a really cheap, like, uh, Beatle bass copy. And I remember being so thrilled about that. You know, my dad was like, oh, better not give up the acoustic bass. You know, newfangled electric bass. Your dad was not down with the electric bass? No, not really, you know. Oh, wow. He was just afraid I'd go off and be a rocker. And and of course, you did. I right? did. Yeah, I did. And uh, you know, I think you'd be happy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you didn't so, stop doing the other stuff. No, I didn't. I kept doing it, doing the acoustic bass and the electric bass, and you know, I had a few lessons on the electric bass, but mostly I transferred acoustic bass knowledge to the electric bass, and therefore I'm a very inefficient electric bass player. Because you go up and down the neck, you know, on this. You don't play like this a lot, which sure. you do on the electric bass. Sure. So. But now you were starting to figure stuff out, what, like being in groups, or how did that work on the electric bass for you? got in bands right away? Or? Yeah, let's see. Um, early on, I wanted to, like, you know, when I was 11 or something, I wanted to have a... <laughs> A band playing Scott Joplin music, just because I had just heard it. <laughs> but uh, I started playing in bands, kind of in junior high a little bit, um, with some friends. And, you know, we never gigged in that one. We just got together and played music. Yeah. But in junior, I mean, in high school, I um, met up with these older guys. And they're like, hey, come to our thing. We're... Come to our garage. We have a band, and you should play in it. And, you know, so I did that all through high school. So now you had already you had copped another bass besides the Beatle bass. That you yeah, had. yeah. Oh man. So Ron Simon had uh, whenever I'd go for an acoustic bass lesson, he had this beautiful Gibson Les Paul Triumph bass, <coughs> mahogany thing, short scale, tons of fucking knobs. It just uh, you know, and as a little kid, I was like. Oh, that, that's cool. So, uh, we were gonna, my dad took me looking, actually, for an electric bass. And yeah. I, I saw this blue Rickenbacker on the wall at some music store in Bellevue, Bandstand East, maybe. And um, we went back to my teacher, Ron, and um, he was like, no, 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 you can't have a Rickenbacker. They're, they're, they're too big. And I'm so fucking th I'm so thankful that he said that. You know, I love Rickenbackers, and I had, I've had a bunch over my and life. And it was a full uh, scale, 34 inch thing at that time, and your hand wasn't. Yeah, I was like 12. Yeah, so Ron was thinking you needed something smaller. Shorter, yeah. yeah, and so he said, I have a student who has one of these Gibson Les Paul Triumph bases. So one of my lessons with him was just about. Picking up that electric bass and meeting the guy selling it and and buying it from my dad bought it for me three hundred and seventy five dollars. Wow! So he 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 sprung for the electric bass. Yeah, he did. He well, did. Hey. You know, he just wanted me to play music. You know, bless his heart. You know. Well, now now speaking of playing music, uh, the summer's coming up, and you had mentioned that there's going to be some. Touring. What are, you, what are you doing? Well, not so much touring. A uh, bunch of bunch of local things. Stuff around. Then. Yeah, um, I'm. I played on a record, a couple of records that are coming out soon, and uh, one of them is with this band Red Dress. I don't know if you remember yeah, yeah, them. Yeah, sure. Man, when I started seeing them in the '80s, you know, I loved my gig at the time, which was. Duffy Bishop and the Rhythm Dogs, and I still love it, and we still play together occasionally. We are playing, actually, a lot this summer. Yeah, and, uh... But, yeah. when I would see Red Dress, I was like, fuck, I want to 
And Greg, I want to be in that band. Greg on drums and. Uh no, it was Bill Shaw. Oh okay. Bill Shaw was on drums. They switched back and forth. Um, Don and Bill were the different drummers, and they both also played in the Range Hoods, kind of okay. off and on, which was another band I loved. Yeah, I I used to trip out when uh, because you were playing with Duffy, but I always knew you as this fretless player before, right? So I just I said, oh wow, you know, because I, you know, you had that kind of fretless thing going, and I thought, oh, that's that's what he is. But then you were doing this whole other thing with Duffy, which just, you know, 180 degrees, right? So, yeah. So that's when you, I, I started seeing that you really, like, had a lot of range, man. You know? Oh, thanks. Oh, yeah. Thanks. So, yeah, early on, we were all kind of bit by the Jocko bug. Uh, you couldn't you not could, be you affected. You could not, not be. Yeah. Now, uh, you're also teaching. I am. So, if somebody wanted to get with you, how do they do that? Well, I teach out of the Georgetown uh, Seattle Drum School. Okay. Yep. So you would contact them and they'll fit you in. And I had a lesson earlier today with someone on the acoustic bass. And then I go back there in a little bit and I teach electric bass for some folks. Yeah, man. Well, yeah. So like usual, you're just... Doing it all, huh? Well, I'm trying to stay busy, you know. Um, yeah, I and just love playing music, so any chance I can get to play with people, I'll take it. You know? And I always wanted to ask you about this particular double bass too. So, oh. what's what's the what's the uh, liner notes on this thing? Man, it's a to me, it's a fun story because uh, so when I was in Little Symphony at 11 years old. The first chair bass player uh, was Brian Monroe. I don't mm. know if you know Chris Monroe. I do know Chris Monroe. Yeah, yeah. Fabulous drummer. drummer. Yeah, there was Bruce Monroe. They were a classical music family. We were a classical music family. The father used to be my doctor. What's that? I said the oh, father yeah. used to be my doctor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dr. Monroe. Yeah. So in Little Symphony, he was, uh, Brian Monroe was first chair, and I idolized that guy he had long hair which was freaky to me you know i just loved it and he plucked his eyebrows up like a vulcan and he wrote freaking symphonies <laughs> that we would play during rehearsal and he just seemed so amazing that uh i you know wow. i really looked up to him uh and when i was just around in high school maybe just out of high school he decided he wasn't going to play bass anymore, so this was the bass he played back then. Wow. Yeah, they sold it to us. And cool. Very yeah. Cool. And what 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 is this? It's a Gotts. Oh, I have a Gotts myself. Yeah. How about that? Look at that. That's nice. Well, they're very they're they're very nice basses, but uh, not so well known. Not as well yeah. known of a German brand as a. Yeah, I love it. You know, carved top. It's oh. it's a hybrid. Plywood back. Very nice. So. Well, play a little bit something about it, would you? Thank you. 
really happy to be with Keith Lowe, and we'll see you next time. Ha <laughs> ha